Welcome back to the last edition today of the Broad Podcaster with me, Jennifer Fierro, right here in the Highland Lakes, joined once more by Art DeLugage, the voice of the Lano Yellow Jackets. We are going to do a total of four segments. That's two on Thursday, and then we did two yesterday because Big 12 Media Days are happening in Arlington. The University of Texas and Steve Sarkeesian, last school to talk about their offseason, their preseason, and what to expect. You're Soon it will be Utah starting off and then Colorado ending. I'm just kidding. A couple of the schools that might come to the Big 12. Well, That's for our podcast way down the line. What did you hear today? I, I heard uh, today he sounded fine, and when he was hired, I'm very impressed. His uh, background as an Alabama uh, uh, quarterback uh, coach, uh, offensive coordinator. Uh, so I don't think you could do much better than that. He praised uh, Coach Saban today. I wondered if he was doing that to sort of get into the Saban uh, Jimbo fight just in a little way. And he just touched on it uh, just this much, but he, but by saying how much he respected Coach Saban. So I liked him when he was hired for the Longhorns. I stuck with him. Uh, through the five and seven season last year, I kept saying game after game was a blip uh, that they lost those big leaves. I don't think that's going to happen this year, and I think he's going to instill in his players that we've got to remember the fourth quarter uh, and realize what happened last year. And Bijan Robinson, the outstanding running back, he touched on that today too, which we can talk about later. But my thoughts on Sarkisian, a good one. You have maintained that Texas will not go five and seven. My gracious, no. Not not the second time. Okay. Do you have a number that you feel comfortable in the win loss record? All right, I will give you nine and three. Uh, Texas makes a bowl and wins it, so ten and three. Okay. And that'll satisfy some Texas fans, and some uh, it may not. Last year, I thought Texas was going to win eight games. They played six games where they lost by a single score. Those are called 50-50 games, and usually 50-50 games are just that. You win half and you lose half. Never would I thought that Texas was going to lose more than those, more than half of those games, which is what happened last year. Well, last year was just absolutely insane to squander those leads week after week. I just uh, I couldn't believe it, but it did. But I think that's got to be a learning uh, a tool for them, a, another cliche. But I, I just don't think that's going to happen this year. In fact, I'm changing my mind. Can you read it? 11 and 2? Huh. Okay. I'm changing my prediction to 11 and 2 Did, with a bowl win. You, you mentioned, you said that there was one question that you wanted to ask. Obviously, we were unable to because we were not attending today. But you had mentioned the one question was, how do you switch that five and seven so that you can finish? What are you doing differently? You said Bijan Robinson gave you the answer. Can you tell them what Bijan said? He said, we're going to, uh, when we get into that fourth quarter, we're going to really realize what happened in 2022, excuse me, 2021, and it's not going to happen in 22. And he's a good one who can say that because he is, one true All-American. Just uh, you're, you're just gonna love watching him. So I, I just don't believe uh, five and seven could come anywhere near that. Uh, Sarkisian, uh, Sarkisian, is that the way to pronounce it? Sarkisian. Sarkisian would uh, would wind up with that kind of a mark. A quickie question here: If he does, is he gone? No, because I I honestly believe it is. I, and I don't even want to say it's understood. He signed a five-year deal. I believe that Texas wants to give him four years. I think Texas is tired of three years and they're gone. Three years and they're gone. No, I think that Texas is committed to four years. I disagree with a lot of my colleagues in the Austin media who tell me three years or bust. I don't think that. I don't believe it. I never thought Sarkeesian would take the job if he was only guaranteed three I think this is a four-year project. But let me be more specific. This is what was said regarding the conditioning. 
Everything that they have done in the offseason has been to get these players better physically conditioned, especially in the fourth quarter. Now, you want to talk about extending plays and extending drives as an offense, that that's how you protect your defense. And I'm quoting Charlie Strong here when I say that. You, there is a thought that you can score quickly. The problem is that if you get into a shootout where you have to score every possession if your offense is on the field, there's a danger to that. I think you saw that with Art Riles. I certainly saw that with Lincoln Riley. It's just that Riley had the horses to be able to finish. Now, Texas right now, I believe, has a lot of talent. It's a lot of inexperienced talent. The other thing that Sarkeesian said today that I liked is you build the team from the inside out, meaning you go get the best linemen you can because they have the skill players. There's a belief that Texas has great quarterbacks, running backs, and wide receivers, and even tight ends. They like the defensive backs. But if your guys in the trenches cannot be better, then I don't know that you have a prayer to improve on that five and seven. Oh, I, I agree with that uh, uh, totally. I've already forgotten who did I uh, hear uh, besides, uh, I did not hear Worthy, Xavier Worthy. I don't think he was there today. Oh, he was there. Okay, but I didn't miss him. But who was the, who was there? The linebacker, Marvion Overshone. Oh, okay. So we did not hear from another wide receiver at all. No, no. And, right, and the, the way that Sarkeesian talked today, the vast majority of the snaps are going to be given, I shouldn't say, here, here's what it looks like. It looks like Xavier Worthy is going to start. If, if Jordan Whittington, who we saw. You mentioned Jordan. Yeah. Jordan led the team last year until he got hurt in the OU game and then had another season-ending injury. Whittington is projected to start. Then you got Isaiah Nair, who is the outstanding transfer from Wyoming who's coming in, another Texas kid. Yes. Uh, and he's expected to be the big play receiver. Whittington is, is expected to be the every down receiver. And Xavier Worthy is in between the two. And then you've got a couple of other guys, two Alabama transfers, including the tight end. So Texas is expected to be better at receiver. B. John Robinson is the undisputed leader of the running backs. But Roshan Johnson is the other running back. It sounds like they moved him back to quarterback where they're going to run more wildcat with him under center or in the shotgun. Roshan is one of the dark horses. He is projected to be a second-round draft pick right now, today in July 2022. As a running back or a quarterback? Don't know. Okay. Don't know. Right. But, but Don't like the word wildcat. I'll get that right in here real quickly. <laughs> to me, a wildcat is nothing more than the old single wing. You snap the ball to a halfback. Okay, fine. For that one play, he's a quarterback. He runs the ball eight yards. Uh, fine. That's all fine. But wildcat and these new terms, no. Okay, so we, we're getting short on time here. Let's talk a little bit about the report that I heard from Chip Brown today. Chip Brown was on 104.9 The Horn this morning with Jeff Howe, and Chip gave some timelines today regarding when and why Texas and OU are looking to leave the Big 12 in 2024. Now, from a Texas and a Longhorn football standpoint, it's very simple. They are not SEC ready. That roster is nowhere near ready to be in the SEC. By 2024, Sarkeesian will have three recruiting classes under his belt at the University of Texas, and hopefully by then they'll be ready. That's the easy part. The hard part is the money. According to Chip, right now, if Texas and OU were to leave any earlier, they would each owe the Big 12 $150 million a piece. Texas could get could pay that by giving back LHN or Longhorn Network to ESPN. Oklahoma simply says they don't have the money to pay that. So that is the big thing there. I do think we're staring down the barrel of Texas and OU trying to go play in the SEC for the 2024-2025 academic year. That's what I have been hearing for weeks and or months. Nothing I heard today has changed my mind. All right. Texas, uh, competitively, I say, if competitively is a word, after I praise Texas so much 
a few minutes ago, I think is going to have one hard task in the SEC. Oklahoma, too, but not quite as much. Now, that's my guess, which uh, you can come ask me about that in two, three years, how many years ever it Jennifer says it will take for them to leave. Okay, so th this is the thing I will say. Do you believe that 2012 for the Aggies with Johnny Manziel was a fluke? Do you think that could be repeated again if you're not a &M? Oh, I think it was a great season, but it did not even get them uh, to uh, the uh, conference championship game. And although I wrote in 2011, they had no business leaving. Uh, and also, uh, they have not been to the uh, championship game in all these years. Uh, 10 years a member of the SEC. So uh, I, I don't, and with some good, Jimbo uh, had a great team, I guess it was two years ago, when they beat North Carolina in the bowl, uh, losing just one game. But boy, and people think too, and then I'll be done, people think too, I'm just talking about Alabama and Georgia, uh, but I'm not. I'm talking about Mississippi, Mississippi State, Tennessee. They can all come up and have good teams. Arkansas was 9-4 and four this past season, winning the Outback Bowl. Uh, Florida uh, can have a, uh, a bad season or two, but be trouble. In other words, it's much more of a weekly grind than the Big 12 is. Okay, let's leave that to one side. All right. Here's my point. I honestly believe if the Aggies had played in the Big 12 in 2012, with Johnny Manziel, they would have gone undefeated and played for a national title that year. They certainly and, would, yes. And, and and as a Texas fan, I was glad they were gone. If they're going to have that kind of a season and go 11-2 and two and not even play for a national title, I'm glad that they were in the SEC to, to do that. Because if they had been in the Big 12, they would have played for a national championship that year. Quickly. It, not just that. Uh, maybe a national championship, I won't. Uh, get into, but Texas went on a bad run after Mac Brown left with Coach Strong. Well, we we could say Mac Mac Brown had a bad four oh, years. Okay, from, but then, from then Coach Strong Coach Strong didn't do much better. Yes, yes. All right. So there was all that talk about A and M wants to get out of the shadow of Texas. Why stay in the Big Twelve and you'll take care of that shadow with no problem? And all that talk about the network. Hurting uh, the lower network, hurting a and hurting the other schools was a total, totally ridiculous. I think the network is fine, but watching volleyball uh, six times a week of games that were five years ago, I, I don't think is going to draw any recruits, especially football. Nothing against volleyball, a national championship team in Texas. But my point about a and is they could have won two or three maybe Big 12s and could have beaten Texas two or three times. Well, I, I will say this. There's no question ESPN is losing millions and millions of dollars annually on the Longhorn Network. That's another reason why, because they owe Texas $150 million on a network that is constantly losing money. So that's another reason why I think Texas is okay with LHN going away as long as they don't have to pay an exit fee to leave early to go to the SEC. And if the, the Big 12 adds more members, like the two Arizona schools, Colorado and Utah, that will give the Texas attorneys, they will see that as an opportunity to say, this is not the conference we signed a contract to play in, we're out. And I think they believe that will allow them to leave without paying anything out. So what's left to see on that, the TV partners, need to meet with the Big 12 and say, okay, here's the new look Big 12. We have these schools who are coming in. Here's how it's going to look. How much is that worth? And then they'll make a determination based off that. We are pressed up against time. Okay. All right. That's all we got. Again, TexasChalkTalk.com. I'm going to have write-ups of these three schools, Texas, Texas Tech, and TCU. For Art Delugage, I'm Jennifer Fierro. Please make sure you like, subscribe, and share the channel. And we'll catch you next time.